What's up? Looks like we're live already. Hope you guys are having a good Thursday night. I just am, uh, I can't watch the end of the football game between the Raiders and Chargers. One, because I don't like either team. And two, because I had Derek Carr in my fantasy lineup and he got injured in the first quarter, which is super unfortunate. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're in the playoffs and that was not the way I wanted to start the week, but you get what you get. So hopefully we will have a couple people jump in here in the next couple minutes and, uh, and see what happens. I'm going to refresh this stream and see if anybody's in here right now, just because I can't quite tell. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's in the chat so far. So I'm going to wait just a couple minutes and then show you what I've got in this package. This guy is uh, from a Black Friday sale that was just a couple weeks ago. It took Tackle Warehouse a while to ship that package out. They were way backed up this year. They always are, but um, this year in particular with COVID and everything else, they didn't ship things out for some two weeks after the sale. So unfortunately, I just got the package uh, yesterday, maybe today. Thought that I would unbox it with you guys live, hang out for a little bit. Um, I did get my monthly discount tackle package in the mail uh, yesterday as well. I recorded that unboxing video that I will post hopefully tomorrow for you guys to be able to see what I picked up. And uh, as is always the case, Discount Tackle is getting new products in all the time. And they just got some of the brand new Z-Man plastics in. So I'm probably going to make another order here in the next day or two from Discount Tackle. So anyway, if you're in here, looks like there's two people in here watching. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know that you're here and, uh, and who you are. And we'll get into this unboxing here in a couple minutes once just a few more people get the notification or, uh, or otherwise and manage to join us. So, hope you're having a good Thursday night. Cheers. Now, let me just make a disclaimer before I do the unboxing. I do the vast majority of my shopping at DiscountTackle.com. As you guys know, I have a relationship with them and, um, and prefer to do all of my shopping there. One, because... They ship fast. Uh, it's no nonsense. Great customer service. Two, they treat me well. And uh, I've been shopping there for the last year or two. And um, and three, I like to save some money when shopping whenever I can. So I don't wait for uh, holiday sales to make my tackle purchases. I'm one of these people who um, I like to stock up whenever something comes out new or when I realize that there's uh, something low in my box or other colors or new baits that I want to pick up. So that is um, the only reason that I ever stray from Discount Tackle. And the reason that I made this purchase from Tackle Warehouse this year during Black Friday. There were a few baits that I had on my list from earlier this year that I wanted to pick up when they were discounted. Which really is only during the Black Friday sale when you can get them cheaper. And then, of course, there were a few fill-in baits that either Discount Tackle doesn't carry or um, colors that were out of stock or what have you. But I will go ahead and open this up for you guys to see. Let's get right into it. Looks like there's only two people in here and nobody is commenting right now. So hit that thumbs up button for me. Leave a comment in the chat and let me know that you're here. Ordinarily, I would like to have more people be a part of this, but if that's not going to be the case, no big deal. Oh my. All right. Looks like we've got a lot of stuff in here. Let me see if I can find the, the invoice first and foremost to be able to show you guys what I picked up. So here's a little preview of what I scooped up in this order. There 
And, uh, and I'm not going to go down the list necessarily because it's, it's jammed in here packaging wise. So I'm just going to kind of pick and choose and show you what it is that I've got in here. I'm sure there's a sticker somewhere in here, but this is one of the few times where I did spend enough money. I think it's a $150 that you have to spend in order to get a t-shirt. So did get a tackle warehouse t-shirt in the gray and the medium size. Um, I actually don't have any right now. Usually I tend to, to stick to that like $50 price range when I make a tackle purchase, just enough to be able to get free shipping. So um, let's just dive right in. And uh, in no particular order, I'm going to show you what I scooped up. First up are a couple of the Storm Wiggle Warts. You're going to see a little bit of a common theme here in that I picked up a number of small bodied medium diving crankbaits. These are great for cold water uh, and when fish are feeding on smaller bait. So great in the fall and in the spring, cold water cranking primarily. I've got a bunch of the wiggle warts in my box um, already. Here's my medium diving small body crankbaits. This entire top row and half of the second row are all filled with wiggle warts. I'm not one of those people who's so much of a lure collector that I think having the original Storm Wiggle Warts make that big of a difference. I don't fish tournaments, so um, I've found that the, the newer, the standard Wiggle Warts do just a fine job, and for like five bucks a pop, it is really tough to beat the price. You know, the old ones, they have a little bit more of a wild and aggressive hunting action, but because they've been discontinued and the mold is a little bit different now, um, the old ones sell secondhand for 40, 50 or more per bait. And, um, and they don't always run true or consistently. So I just don't find it worth it personally to pay that price tag to get those baits. Looks like we've got a couple people in the chat right now. Mr. XR Woody, cheers. What's up, dude? How you doing tonight? Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. FG Matus, what up, dude? Hope you guys are having a good night or whenever it is for you. So both of these are the uh, Phantom Brown Crawfish. Now, I already have one in my box, so I'm going to open one up for you right now to show you. And I very well may give away the other one. Um, in my monthly giveaway that I do via Instagram. So this, the Phantom Brown Crawfish and the Phantom Green Crawfish are some of my favorite colors that are made in the Wiggle Wart. This brown is almost bordering on red, but it is a phantom translucent color here. You get a little bit of that red on the bill and you get more of a frosted lip on it as well. So, great bait here. Classic rattling action in the wiggle wart that is a, a little bit higher pitch. Fairly loud, but not overwhelmingly so. If you watch the unboxing video that I'm going to post here in the next day or two from Discount Tackle for this month, I did pick up um, a couple of similar baits. The Strike King 3XD and... Uh, one that I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. They all have very different rattling systems. They all dive to about the same depth and are meant to fish rock in that, say, 6 to 10, 8 to 12 foot range. And, uh, and the wiggle wart still is probably my go-to bait for, uh, for that depth and in cold water. Claudio, what's up, man? How you doing tonight? Thank you for hanging out. Uh, so I picked up two of the wiggle warts and you know, keep in mind all of this stuff was 20% off at tackle warehouse. So I ended up spending, what was it? These guys were just $3.99 a pop. So ordinarily they retail on tackle warehouse for 
after 20% off, they were $3.99 each. Couldn't help but pick up a couple, especially in a color that I have a lot of confidence in and like to throw. So next up, while we're on the topic of medium diving crankbaits, this is the Spro Rock Crawler 55 MD. Now the standard rock crawler, I'll go ahead and pull these out for you just so we can do some uh, comparisons side by side. And I'll show you, uh, first of all, the other color wiggle wart that I have a lot of confidence in is the phantom green crayfish. So here are the differences between them side by side color wise. You can see that the green has a green back. The brown has a brown back. Like I said, that brown is bordering on red though. So a little bit of a different look depending on the clarity of the water and the color of the crawdads that you're fishing around and that the, the fish are feeding on, uh, you're gonna switch up your colors. So um, let's talk about the rock crawler real quick because this is one of the more famous medium diving crankbaits on the market right now. This is the Spro Rock Crawler 55. This has a longer bill to it and this guy dives nine to 14 feet. I find that you know it, it usually will reach kind of right in the middle, right about 12 feet with no issues. Listen to this. Very subtle muted rattle inside this guy. And it's a killer rock fishing crankbait for that medium to deep diving range. However, um, I find that it does grind the bottom pretty hard and it's more susceptible to hanging up than I would see as ideal. So I decided to check out the MD version of the same bait. They do make a smaller rock crawler size 50, which um, dives shallower in that four to eight foot range, but it's a smaller bait. I wanna say that 55 is like two and a quarter inches in length and weighs a half ounce. So very easy to fish on bait casting gear on a standard crankbait setup. However, that 50 size only weighs a quarter ounce and really does need to be thrown on finesse fishing gear on a spinning rod. So they make this Rock Crawler 55 MD, which is the same size that two and a quarter inches and a half ounce weight, but with a smaller, shorter bill to make it dive more in that medium four to eight foot range. So I picked up a few of these during the Tackle Warehouse sale because they're not cheap crankbaits. They're not particularly expensive, but they retail at about $10. And, um, and after the sale, they were $7.75 a pop. So this color here is called Molting Craw. It's got a brown back, yellow sides, and a little bit of an orange belly. Great spring crawdad color got some bright colors on it and let me just show you side by side the differences between the md and the standard rock crawler gosh these gamakatsu stock treble hooks are sharp so here are the differences you can see the bill size um, is is a bit different not only is it narrower but it is shorter so this guy dives right in that four to eight foot range, and this guy dives nine to 14 feet. So you've got shallow to medium and medium to deep here. And again, the rattle system is gonna be the same. Very muted, quiet rattle to it. Just a single um, knocker that doesn't move much, okay? And I think that's key to getting bites in a lot of situations is that quieter rattle. So sometimes you might switch between something like the Wiggle Wart or the Strike King 3XD that are going to dive right in that same uh, depth zone, but be a little bit louder. I'd start with that perhaps. And if, if the bite is slow or dies down after a few fish, then I'd switch to something a little bit more subtle in sound profile. Now, the Rock Crawler does have a good hunting action as well, but most of these baits are going to have pretty similar action 
in terms of being uh, kind of a medium wobble to them. So I did pick up two other colors in the same bait. And maybe I had the, the color of that first one incorrect. This is not molting craw. This is spring craw. So I did mention after saying what I thought was the color that this is a great spring crawfish style pattern. Hence the name spring craw. Now this one is called molting craw. And it is gonna be just a little bit more natural brown and orange instead of that bright yellow. So here they are side by side. You can see that the spring craw is quite a bit more chartreuse, whereas the molten craw is a bit more orange. So you get the brown back on the molten craw and that light tannish uh, greenish brown back on the spring craw. So just subtle differences there, but both have their time in place. And then lastly, got one in the phantom brown color. I do really like these phantom crawfish patterns. A little bit of translucency, more of a subtle color profile here where it's going to fade from green to brown and then not much color on the belly just that translucent green so very subtle rattle in the uh the spro rock crawlers but picked up three of those at 7.75 a pop and then i've just got one of these in the pack right now or in the package this is the berkeley dredger 10.5 so I've got a bunch of these in my box here. Well, probably six or eight of them. And it takes up this spot next to my wiggle warts. And um, this guy has a lot of the same characteristics. Has been out a couple years now. Was designed by famous crankbait fisherman David Fritz. And so it's got a medium wobble to it and dives right in that 10 and a half foot range. Um, hence the name 10.5. Uh, I would actually say it's probably more like a eight to 10 foot diver, but it does again have that small body profile and weighs a half ounce. So it's very castable. The bill is going to be a little bit smaller on this one than say the rock crawler. But one unique feature is that it's got the weight in the bill there so I like that um, it's going to be weighted down more and it's going to stay relatively snagless and dig into the bottom this is one of these cool new HD color patterns they call it HD perch I believe let me double check oh where is it yeah HD yellow perch so beautiful very realistic color pattern there and, uh, and I'm happy to have it. Now, you get some more free-floating rattles in this. Not extremely loud. A little bit higher pitch. But um, that's definitely one that you need to have in the arsenal of similar style baits. Now, I think there are just a couple of other similar ones that I picked up in this package. And this is one of my favorites. It's an older bait but still has its time and place for sure. This is the Norman Little N crankbait. So again, small body crankbait. Um, I want to say this guy weighs more like three-eighths of an ounce. Not quite the half ounce that the other ones do, but I picked this one up in three color patterns. And this first one is called uh, White Green Fleck. So a couple of things to note about the Norman middle end, and this is consistent of all Norman baits, are that they're very well constructed. They have this thick, clear coat on them so that the, the paint schemes really do not chip much at all. And they put a lot of very shiny flake in there. 
So again, this is a pearl belly and a green shad type of color pattern overall. They paint the eyes on there, which I like. And then the baits are made out of an old material called butyrate. So you get more of a loud rattle reminiscent of the wiggle wart. Little bit lower pitch on the Norman. Uh, but these are very durable baits. They come with sticky sharp hooks straight out of the package. And um, like I said, I like the paint jobs. I like the action that this butyrate material makes. And um, I want to say that baits are not made out of butyrate anymore um, other than like Norman and Bandit and a couple of more old school manufacturers because the material butyrate is um, has been proven to cause cancer. So I'm not quite sure how Norman gets around that or what but um it is just a little bit different in the thickness of the walls of these baits and the sound profile that it puts off and the way that it floats up so um, the norman middle end is an underrated old school type of bait that i quite like and so i decided to pick up a couple couple of color patterns that i didn't already have this one is called clear sexy shad and that is exactly what it looks like. So you get that blue back, chartreuse line down the side, and clear belly. Now I'll show you up close. It does still have a ton of flake in that clear coat, like I mentioned. So that's one thing that Norman does extremely well. And like I mentioned, these paint jobs are very durable. So I've got a handful of those in my box right now. Uh, this entire section on the bottom row are these Norman little ends. And, um, and I absolutely love these baits. Now, another one that I'm not necessarily going to open here on the stream because I've already got one or two in my box and I might throw this in this month's giveaway alongside this Storm Wiggle Wart is this sour grape color so it's chartreuse on the side and purple on the back take a look at that color this is right up the alley of kevin baxter the bait man and uh and i quite like it just a little bit of a variation off of like a chartreuse black back and uh and i'm into that justin what up dude Good to see you in here. Thanks for hanging out. All right, moving on. Same style bait. We've got a couple of the Six Sense Curve 55 crankbaits. And I hate to do this to you guys because I've only been streaming for a short period of time, but I need to go pee. I've been drinking water all night and, um, and it's starting to run through me. And that's unfortunate. Hopefully I don't have to do that again. I see there's six or eight people in here right now. Hang tight. Don't go anywhere. I will be back in one minute. I promise. I'm coming, I'm coming. Justin, there's not a lot of chitter chatter in the live chat tonight. 
I can't exactly tell you why none of the regulars are in here. So not a lot of people in here right now. Also, I don't typically stream on weeknights. So that's probably why you don't see a lot of people in here. George is saying on Thursday. Yeah, dude, my wife changed her work schedule around the holidays this, uh, this month so that she doesn't have to work on Christmas or New Year's. So that's why I'm on here right now. That's why you probably won't see me on Friday or Saturday this week or next. No way you heard the toilet flush. That's hilarious. Um, anyway, let's get back into it. Six Cents Curve 55 is the next one on the list. And this is a very underrated, awesome bait that, again, I have a few of in my box, but wanted to get a couple more colors of. Relative to these other small body, medium diving crankbaits, this guy um, has a, a relatively tight action, but dives shallower. So this is more, say, in the uh, five... I would say four to six foot range, typically speaking, but you can get it to dive deeper on lighter line. As you hear, it's got a, a relatively loud rattle, almost more like a one knocker. Now this color here is called Mudbug Red, and I like it. It's got that red top, orange belly, kind of a, a crawfish um, stripe on the back so that when it's when it's digging and diving nose down, you'll see that and it'll look kind of like a red crawfish. And then it's got those green eyes, which a couple of the six inch baits do have these green eyes and I'm a big fan of it. So um, again, this one dives, it says five to nine feet, but typically all of these baits are going to overrate the diving depth. So, you know, where the rock crawler says it dives nine to 14 feet, I think the wiggle wart even says that it dives like something crazy, seven to 18 feet. It would be almost impossible to get it to dive 18 feet unless you were trolling on, you know, six pound test or something like that. But even still, I don't, I don't think it's going to go that deep. So um, the curve 55, while it says it dives five to nine feet, I think it's more that four to six foot range, typically speaking. Also, just a rule of thumb with crankbaits is that you want to fish a crankbait that will dive as deep or a little bit deeper than the depth of water that you're fishing. So this bait diving five to nine feet is where you're going to want to fish water that is five to eight feet deep, knowing that it's going to make contact with the bottom and grind down there. So this color is called Black Magic, one of my favorite six cents colors overall. Black and blue crankbaits are just something you don't see a lot of. And um, so this is primarily black. Little bit of blue um, patterning on the sides. And then kind of a green stripe down the belly. You will see the same color pattern is a bait that I unboxed in my discount tackle unboxing um, in the Strike King 3XD. They call it, um, what do they call that color? I already forget, and I just recorded that video earlier today, but it's almost the identical color pattern aside from the eyes. You get that same black with a little bit of blue and then that green stripe down the belly. Now the 3XD from Strike King is going to dive quite a bit deeper than the Curve 55. So I like having um, similar color patterns similar baits but for different tools so i will fish this in shallower water in say that four to six foot range and then i'll throw the 3xd in more like a you know six to ten or something like that now interestingly enough listen to that this guy sounds silent right now i actually don't know why it's not rattling. I wonder if the rattles are stuck inside the bait or if this color specifically is made to be silent. But that is fascinating to me. Something that I wouldn't necessarily expect 
when you hear that louder rattle from the mud bug red color. Huh, I did not know that they made any of the curves in a silent model, but honestly, I don't necessarily mind that. You get a little bit more stealthy approach. Um, I might reach out to Sixth Sense and see if that was intentional or a little bit of a defect, but let me see. Claudio is asking, under what conditions would you fish that black color? Honestly, you'd be surprised to find out that a black and blue crankbait does well, not just in dirty water, but also really clear water. So I'm pretty much only going to fish it in dirty or clear, but not anything in the middle. That's where I'm going to throw something that's a little bit brighter, uh, more whites and chartreuses, uh, reds, depending on the time of year. But black and blue is going to be awesome in really dirty water or low light conditions or also high sun and clear water. Uh, it's just one of those colors that does surprisingly well in a variety of conditions. But I hope that answers your question. Let's keep it moving. Now I've got one square bill crankbait in here. And this is simply because I didn't already have this color pattern in this bait specifically. And this is the Lucky Craft LC 1.5 square bill crankbait. Um, nothing particularly special about this bait. It's just a go-to. Um, I, for the most part, like to keep it simple when it comes to square bill fishing. I throw like two square bills and that's pretty much it. And I throw the Strike King KBD 1.5 and the Lucky Craft LC 1.5. Both are very affordable baits and, uh, and are going to cost somewhere in that five to eight dollar range. Now there are a ton of square bills on the market and, um, and you can fish most of them effectively. There's not a whole lot of variation between them, but for the most part, I like to fish silent square bill crankbaits like this Lucky Craft. There's no rattle inside it, as is the case with the standard KVD 1.5, though they do make a rattle inversion, which is um, an exclusive for Bass Pro and Cabela's. And then they just came out this year with the new hard knock version of the KVD 1.5, which I did purchase a couple of in this month's discount tackle package and unboxed earlier today. I will be posting that video hopefully tomorrow, but if not over the weekend. So this color is called American Shad and is one of my favorite Lucky Craft colors that they make. Um, it does cost $1 more than the standard color patterns, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. So ordinarily, this thing would cost $7.99, and after a 20% discount during the Black Friday sale, I paid $6.39 for this bait. So had to have one of those in my box just because when it comes to square bills, I'm not going to dig them out because they're on bottom down here. But um, I have a variety of shad patterns in the LC 1.5, but did not have the American shad. And this guy is going to put off a lot of flash. So um, in sunny, windy conditions or in just slightly colored water, that extra flash makes a big difference. Now, I picked up one lipless crankbait in this. Uh, package and this is the Ima suspending vibe this is a unique bait that I've talked about a couple times before on the channel and it is one of just a few suspending lipless crankbaits on the market these days um, it's it's kind of a rare thing I know that the old Bill Lewis rattle trap uh, either was or still is made in a suspending version but they're hard to find and so really the two main ones on the market right now are the Ima Suspending Vibe and the Six Sense Quake 80 Suspending. So this is more of a standard size lipless crankbait. I want to say it's a half ounce, but it could be five eighths. This thing is, goodness, it's three eighths. So a size wise, it's 2.75 inches in length. So it's a little bit longer and a little bit lighter than most or than a standard size lipless crankbait. You can see it's got that longer tail to it. Has a rattle to it that's a bit more significant than the Quake 80 suspending from Six Sense. 
which is a little bit more of like a knocker. But this bait here is um, surprisingly effective. It's really a hybrid between a lipless crankbait and a jerkbait because it suspends. So this thing is going to be fished best in the, say, two to four feet of water. So if you've got submergent grass in the summer or early fall, it excels there. But also, you can fish it in just pretty much anywhere, anytime that you want. So anytime from the spring to the fall, this bait will excel. And, um, and you can fish it totally different than you would a standard lipless crankbait. Now, of course, you can cast and wind. Just chuck and wind the thing um, straight in the upper portion of the water column. But as you kill it, the bait is going to stop in place instead of shimmy or fall like most lipless crankbaits would. So um, a standard lipless crankbait on a stop and go retrieve, you're more likely to yo-yo it off of bottom. But this guy here on a stop and go will stop in place and elicit a lot of bites that way. So Ima Lures, just like Yozuri, um, is a company that is Japanese. And so you get high quality designs color patterns and terminal the split rings and hooks that come on these baits are top notch but you can get them at an affordable price tag so they retail somewhere in the ten dollar range but um discounted i got that bad boy for 7.99 okay and now we're just down to stuff that i'm not going to fish until probably May. Um, and this is really a, a summertime situation. I mentioned that I picked up a couple of baits that I had my eye on and was wanting to add to my box um, for the sake of having them, but am not totally comfortable with the price tag on them. And these are some higher end poppers, okay? Now let me start with uh, one that I already have one of in my box, but wanted to get another one in a different color pattern, mostly so that I can do a review for you guys and show you up close what the internals of the bait look like, what makes it different shape-wise, sound-wise, and so forth. So this is the Yellow Magic Magnum Popper. So this is the larger size of the two that they make, and this is the half ounce model. And listen to how loud this bait is. You've got multiple rattle chambers here. So I'm going to try and show you up close that you've got a rattle up front toward the head. You've got some small BBs right in the middle of the bait. You've got another rattle behind it. And then you've got one in the tail section. So literally four different rattle chambers in this bait. Very loud. And like you're going to see is the case on most of these baits. It has um, a concave lip like you'd find on a popper, but at more of an angle. So the, the mouth, uh, the chin of the bait does not come out as far as the nose. And that is crucial to the action that you get out of a popper and, um, and to getting it to work most effectively um, in order to be able to work the bait in a number of different ways. Of course, if you're just going to uh, to pop a popper in place close to a piece of structure. You don't need anything fancy. You can fish uh, just a standard Rebel Pop R and get away with a bait that's going to cost you five or seven bucks. But certain baits like this, especially that are designed to do multiple things, you can walk this bait extremely well. Um, you can chug it, you can pop it, and, um, and you can work it faster as well so it's just going to have a little bit more erratic of an action a different sound profile and a different look to give the fish let me show you um the i really like the color patterns and the fact that they put a lot of flake in the belly of these baits so even though this is a totally clear transparent color that they call mm, let me find it this is called ghost shad 
So it's literally just a clear bait with a red head. There is still a lot of flash on the belly. So when this bait sits still, it's still going to give off a bit of flash. Of course, it comes with a, a treble, uh, a feather treble on the rear. And then I like that they, you know, in the box, these come with these uh, hook protectors so as to prevent a little bit of hook rash while it's sitting in the package or before you fish the bait. But whatever, that, that's a little bit of a, a nitpicking sort of thing. Not all that important. Russ Dennis in the building. What's up, dude? How are you doing tonight? Okay, we've got just a couple more baits. Next up is the Don Iovino Splash It. And I, I don't know why it says the Splash It 2. Um, because I've never owned one of these. And I don't know what makes it a version 2. Um, it could be the size or it could be that this bait has been adjusted and adapted. And now this is the literal second version of the same bait that he makes so you're going to get a similar profile i should have kept the the yellow magic popper out i'll probably show you guys all three of these baits side by side at the end just so you can get a close-up of them you get these same hook protectors from this bait uh, the don iovino splash it is just a little bit cheaper but also same exact profile and design on this bait even down to the flake on the belly and the clear coat really protecting that um, it's not like it's outside of the paint so in my opinion this is not going to rub off or wear off very easily that these paint jobs should stand the test of time uh, fairly well so you should be able to to make this last and get bit a bunch before it really starts chipping off too bad. Now let's listen to the sound. Sounds pretty similar, um, but of course I'm going to have to compare them side by side. So I'm going to leave the, the Yellow Magic out. Sounds pretty dang similar to me. You guys tell me in the comment section, do you notice any differences from where you're sitting or not? I picked up the splash it in two colors. And that one was called uh, natural bluegill. And this color here, is called Miracle Minnow. So this is more like a standard ghost minnow type of pattern. You're gonna get kind of a brownish green top, a little bit of a blue purpley hue on the side, and then just a standard pearl belly. So really like that, very natural shad and or bluegill type of pattern, somewhere between like a, uh, a ghost minnow and an IU color pattern. And I can already tell just looking at it that, my goodness, the rattle chambers are almost identical. And I'm a little bit surprised to see that, to be honest with you. Take a look at that side by side. Can you see? We've got four rattle chambers, one in the tail and three in the middle of the bait. Only main difference that I see are the size of the balls in the rattle chamber on the splash it. So it's possible that the splash it is just a little bit louder than the yellow magic, but my goodness, those sound extremely similar. The cup of the nose, the shape, it looks like these are almost from the same mold. 
The line ties in the same position. Wow, I, I had no idea they were gonna be that similar, to be honest with you. The Splash It uh, retails, like I said, just a little bit cheaper. I wanna say it's about $14.99. I got those for $12.63 a pop. And the, um, the Yellow Magic is just a little bit more, more like $16.99, got it for $13.59. So very similar baits, very similar price tag. And I did not necessarily expect that. So next up are the Labina Lures Rio Rico. These guys are made in Japan as opposed to the U.S. Uh, with the, the last two. Now, the, the Yellow Magic, they claim, is a Japanese designed bait, but it's made in Texas out of Emory, Texas. And the Don Iovino Splash It, I want to say, is made in California. But don't, don't quote me on that. And if anybody in the comment section knows right now, looks like William Reed is saying, nice organization. Um, are you talking about my organization behind me? Or are you talking about Don Iovino and his company? So Labina Lures Rio Rico. This is one of those baits on the market that is kind of like the undisputed uh, best popper on the market. Yeah, kind of like the Mega Bass Vision 110 jerk bait. This is one of those baits that most people who fish this lure say that it's worth every penny that you pay for it. And it's not cheap. Uh, I want to say these guys retail for like 21 or 22 bucks a pop. And so after the discount, after saving 20% on Tackle Warehouse, I still paid $18.39 a piece for these. So this one is called Black Beauty. And that's exactly what it is. It is a beauty. It is pure black with a black cupped lip, a black feathered treble, and just those 3D eyes on it. So very stealthy. I throw this again in low light conditions, summertime. The Rico is known to be um, able to be fished very fast. Um, more so than any other bait in its class. So uh, that is primarily what I intend to do with it. But because it's made so well, you can kind of work it in any which way you see fit. So of course, there are other baits on the market that are made to make a larger splash if you are working the bait slower. Um, there are going to be others that will walk a bit more aggressively. But this thing... Um, just the, the way it sounds and the way that it moves when fished quickly is different and it gets more bites. So listen to this guy. I will say that sounds louder than the other two that we looked at. So that's Black Beauty and this one is called Hammer Shad. And so it, it's got more of a black transparent back to it, a see-through purpley side with a little bit of yellow up toward the gill plate and toward the head and it's got a transparent little bit of a, a pinkish red cupped mouth and it's got a white feathered treble on it so as you can see the rattle chambers in this one are a little bit different I don't see any BBs in that middle chamber I see three balls one up front one say three quarters of the way back and one in the tail so all of these have very similar internals in terms of the rattle chambers and where the bait is weighted. Looks like the, the Don Iovino has a little bit more aggressive of a cup on the mouth, but perhaps, uh, perhaps not as deep. I don't know. Honestly, I'm going to have to take a look at these off stream and get a feel for them. Okay, okay. Listen to the Rico. Here's the splash it. You can hear those BBs. Knock, rattle. Now here is, um, here's the yellow magic. 
versus the Rico. Rico. Yellow Magic. Again, you can hear those BBs. So now let's compare the Yellow Magic and the Don Iobino one more time. Here's the, the Splash It. Here's the Yellow Magic. Extremely similar. Wow, I was surprised to find that out. Um, now, I'll, I'll give you guys my opinion once I have a chance to see these in better light conditions. And, of course, once I have a chance to fish them next year. But, just from the looks of it, it seems like the Splash It might be the better way to go than the Yellow Magic. One, because I like the color patterns a little bit better on the Splash It. There are more transparent color patterns like this Miracle Minnow. I'm pretty sure this Ghost Shad was like the only one that you could see through from Yellow Magic. However, I'll say that a big reason that I picked up the Yellow Magic in the first place is that Matt Allen from Tactical Bassin speaks very highly of the Splash or of the Yellow Magic over the other two. He hasn't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but when he's talking about poppers and what his favorite ones to use are, he talks about the Yellow Magic um, like as his go-to. Now, everybody has their own personal preferences, and that is what it is, but I wanted to be able to try out a variety of high-end lures and get a feel for them myself and be able to talk intelligently about them. And to be honest, seeing these side-by-side is almost more confusing than anything else. It's hard to get a feel for it from reviews that you'd see online or from the descriptions, but it really helps to be able to see the internals of these baits and understand how they're designed and what makes them different from one another. That Rico is louder and has a deeper pitch because it doesn't have small BBs in it, whereas both of the other two have two small BBs right in the center of the bait. So anyway, sorry to be so wordy on the poppers. Um, that does it for this unboxing. I picked up, you know, 15, maybe 20 lures. Um, spent about 150 bucks and got that free t-shirt. But like you, like you saw, I picked up a lot of medium diving, small body crankbaits because that is mostly what I've been trying to fill out my box with. Um, as of late so just try and add to my collection again I've got the wiggle warts here I've got the Berkeley dredger 10.5 here I've got the rock crawlers here this is the standard size and now I've got some of the MDs to fill in here these are the Strike King 3XDs these are the six cents curve 55s and these are the Norman middle ends so you know half a dozen or eight different small body medium diving crankbaits that all have slightly different profiles, actions, uh, diving depths, and sounds. So I'm, I'm probably not going to get much more carried away than that. And um, of course, there's a million baits on the market. You can go well beyond what I've uh, been collecting myself and showing you guys. But these are what I have most confidence in and um and what i've heard the best things about so um i have less experience with the medium diving rock crawler with the finesse curve or not finesse curve but with that curve 55 from six cents um but like i said i've been fishing the wiggle wart i've been fishing the the norman middle n for a while and um i suppose i haven't thrown the the striking 3xd quite as much I just picked those up earlier this year. So, again, um, middle to deep diving crankbaits are something that I'm just getting a little bit more and more into and something that I see myself throwing that much more in the future. So, there's a reason that I'm filling out those boxes. There's a reason that I'm filling out the poppers. I like to throw a bit of everything, but I want to feel well-versed and uh, like I've got tools for kind of every situation depending on what the bite um and the conditions are like at that time. So, uh, Frog, what up, dude? I made $100 on flies this week.
Good for you, man. Right on. Does that mean you hand tie your own flies and you sold some and you made a hundred bucks this week? If so, congrats, man. That's good. That's a good start. We should, uh, we should talk about fly tying sometime or did you buy flies and resell them? Cause I am seriously considering getting into fly tying myself. As you guys know, I live in Colorado and do a fair amount of fly fishing for trout. I mean, that's, that's the most popular style of fishing here by a long shot. Although there is very good bass fishing, walleye fishing, pike fishing, musky fishing, kind of anything that you would want to do um, exists here. And there's a reason that I got into bass fishing a handful of years ago, but I grew up fly fishing. I've always been into the sport and will always be uh, for the rest of my life. So I have fly fishing, uh, fly tying materials that were passed down from my grandfather. And I've been meaning to get into it uh, this past year in particular. I did get those from him about two years ago. And he just passed away um, about a month ago. And I've been thinking about him a lot. I see a lot of the stuff that he passed down to me uh, from fly fishing stuff to camera gear and things like that. And uh, I can't help but think about him somewhat regularly. So um, even the, the baby grand piano that I have upstairs and finally uh, got from my parents recently uh, was passed down to me from his wife, uh, my mom's mom, uh, when she passed away some 10 or 15 years ago, she gave it to me in her will. So um, no worries. Thank you for the kind words, Frog. Uh, I'm not trying to get any sympathy here. Just mentioning uh, where my interest in fly tying came from. And, uh, and a lot of that is because he passed on his gear. As his vision got worse, as he was getting older and uh, was doing a lot less fishing, he stopped tying as many flies and, uh, and he had a fair amount of gear. So he decided to give it to me in hopes that I might get into it. And I have every intention to do so, just haven't gotten around to doing it. So you say, yep, I tie my own flies and sell them. I'm saving up for a kayak. Good for you, man. Right on. Are you going to fly fish out of the kayak? Or are you going to bass fish or what? And when you fly fish, what kind of species of fish are you targeting? Are you targeting panfish or trout or both or, or what? You said, not sure if you read my message before, but I was saying that I'm super Mexican, the guy with the big profile picture. Okay, I did not put those together. Uh, good for you, though, man. Thank you for, for uh, connecting the dots for me. It's good to, uh, to at least be able to know who you are and that you've been around for a while and uh, and I appreciate that so I'm gonna open it up to you guys there's just a few people still watching I've been on for about an hour um, unbox this package pretty quickly and um, if you guys have anything else that you'd like to talk about any questions you might have um, I'd be happy to do so and answer any questions otherwise I'm probably gonna dip out of here in a couple minutes Planning on bass fishing on my kayak. I target steelhead and trout when fly fishing. Awesome. Yeah, we don't really have steelhead here in Colorado. Uh, we do have pretty much every species of trout and, um, and some great trout fishing. So interesting. I'd, I'd like to do some steelhead fishing at some point in the future. I know that they can get huge. Um, I'd also like to go fly fishing for salmon. I've got a buddy who works up in Alaska for a few months out of the year, every year, um, kind of from early summer to early fall, and uh, has an absolute passion for that. And uh, I would not mind getting into targeting some other species of fish on the fly. So we should definitely exchange messages about fly tying at some point in the future, uh, just because I'm going to have a lot of questions. I'd love to see what it is that you make and are selling these days, uh, how that goes, and, um, and how the experience and the journey has been since getting into to tying your own flies. Um, do you pretty much fly fish only with your own flies these days? Or, uh, or is it a little bit of a mix? And do you mostly tie flies to be able to use? Or are you treating it like a business with the intent to sell and make money off of it? Because 
Um, you know, I've, I've contemplated that as well, but I know that it's a fair amount of work and that the margins aren't always that great. So, you know, I'm proud and, um, and interesting to hear that you uh, made a hundred bucks selling flies this week. So good for you. You had a customer from Colorado. He sent some pictures of his fish. Good. Still pretty new, but you always try out your own flies when you go fishing. Good to hear. Well, right on, man. Um, send me a message on Instagram. If I'm not mistaken, you're super Mexican on Instagram, right? Or did you just change your profile name on YouTube here? Did you used to be called Super Mexican and now you're Frog V 2.0? Because I would be easier to contact and, uh, and communicate with via Instagram if you do have that. Dang. Okay, are you on Instagram as well? Because my handle, if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, I'm pretty active over there and have um, a bit larger of a following on Instagram than I do here on YouTube. My handle is at hooksets.rfree. Okay, you do follow me. Yeah, send me a DM and, uh, and show me some of the stuff you make just so that we can get the conversation going because I do intend to get into fly fishing uh, or fly tying, I should say. Here in the next few months or next year for sure and I wouldn't mind a little bit of inspiration there are a couple of accounts that I follow on Instagram who do some really really high quality fly tying and um, and I aspire to be that good someday but um but I know it's another rabbit hole to go down for sure especially when you consider all of the equipment all of the hackle and uh, and materials that you can acquire uh, through tying your own flies. So I just like the ingenuity and the innovation in it that it seems like the patterns that you can create are endless and um, And I really like the concept of that. So who knows maybe someday we can collaborate and uh, And sell our own flies together Cool, man. Um, yeah, well, let's talk about that in the DMS on Instagram. You let me know what it is that you follow, where you get some of your inspiration, uh, how you've learned what you've learned so far, and we'll talk more about that. Do you guys have any quick questions about any of the lures behind me, anything that is new on the market, uh, any comments about what you're fishing, what you've been having success with as of late? Because here in Colorado, it just in the last two weeks got cold enough. We got a couple of snowstorms and everything has frozen over. So um there's really no way to fish public water uh ponds lakes reservoirs anymore everything is freezing over here in the denver metro area everything up in the high country in the mountains has been frozen for a few weeks or a few well a month or more at this point so um i don't do a lot of ice fishing that's another thing that i intend to get into in the next couple of years I don't really have much of an intention of getting into it this year just because my focus remains on skiing and my wife is pregnant with our, our third child and due here in just two and a half months. So come end of February, I'm going to be done skiing and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to cut the ski season short. Won't really have opportunities to get away just because we will be busy with all things parenting for a while there and then before you know it in late March uh, we'll have open water here and I'll be back to bass fishing so I'll probably have a couple days where I go out and do some winter fly fishing for trout I did get out a few weeks ago that uh, three weeks ago or so and had a, a frigid cold day but managed to catch about a half a dozen uh, rainbow and brown trout had a great day out and uh, so I'll probably do a little bit more of that Say I'm planning on ice fishing this year. Always want to learn some ice fishing fly patterns. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know that a lot of people uh, use flies for ice fishing. Obviously, you'd have to use something with a pretty heavy um, bead on the front in order to get it down. But uh, that, that's an interesting concept. 
Of course, you could throw a, a bigger bug. Uh, you know, something that you might throw as like a streamer, typically, that's going to get down quicker. But in my opinion, that profile is going to be a little bit too large. Now, I wonder if something like the Pistol Pete could be effective um, in ice fishing. The Pistol Pete, if you're not familiar with this style fly, it has a propeller on the front and a weighted bead. So this was designed to be used on a float and fly style application. Now they make a, a wide variety of flies, um, but it's that same concept. So you get a bead in the front and a propeller that goes with it. So you can fish this thing uh, with a little bit more movement. And of course, in current, that propeller is going to go. But um, I, I just would assume that you have to fish something that's going to be a little bit heavier in order to get it down, unless you're fishing really skinny water. But for the most part, when ice fishing, my understanding is that fish are feeding on bottom. So, um, you know, mostly jigs or rattle traps, um, small bait fish profile uh, baits are going to be most effective and usually either in bright colors or with a little bit more sound or vibration uh, to them in order to attract the fish. But that said, I don't know a lot about ice fishing, haven't been into it. I've just seen a lot of videos and know some people that are into it. So again, that could be a topic for another time. Um, it's something for us to talk about offline as well. So you said, yep, they're usually tungsten beads and they weight it with wire on the inside. Yep, I hear you. Okay, man, well, I'm gonna dip out of here, uh, but it's been fun hanging out. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. Looks like We've got eight thumbs up, and I do appreciate that. If you're one of the four people in here right now and you haven't already hit that thumbs up button, do me that solid. Hit the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, do me that favor. Um, I am going to be posting more regularly. As I said, I've got uh, my discount tackle unboxing for the month of December. Uh, should be posted here tomorrow or on Saturday. And um, I'm not sure that I'm going to do another live stream until next week. Chances are it will be midweek again next week um, either Wednesday or Thursday night so hope you all are doing well although next Thursday is going to be Christmas Eve so um, probably not but maybe we'll have to see so thank you guys for hanging out thank you for your support and as always I'll see you in the next one cheers <laughs>